Hello friends, Intuitive Renee here, bringing you your weekly reading for the week of the, gosh I have to think about it, <laughs> the 29th of May through to the 4th of June. So we're doing Sunday through to Saturday, so we're finishing off the month of May and we're starting the month of June 2022. So 29th of May, yes, 29th of May, <laughs> through to the 4th of June. I'll get it right eventually. On the table here in front of me, I have the decks that we're going to start off with, which is the decks that give us our theme for the week ahead. And um, straight after that, we're going to get into your animal reading. We're also going to do your crystal energy reading. And then we're going to do the elemental readings where we cover all the signs of the zodiac. And um, after that, we do our Q&A with Spirit. And for those of you on my motivated and activated channel tiers, you get to stick around for a bonus reading as well. All of these um, different portions or different aspects of this particular reading are put into chapters just below. So to help make it easy navigation for you. So if you're not really into crystal readings or if you're not really into any aspect of it, skip that portion and go to the bits that are relevant for you. Um, this is obviously a free reading and available to everybody. Anybody and everybody is welcome to watch and enjoy. And in return, all I ask is that you click that subscribe button um, to my channel, give the video a thumbs up, and a comment is always so appreciated. So friends, let's get straight into your reading and let's have a look and see what is the end of May and the beginning of June have in store for us. So we're going to start with this particular deck which is the word of the year oracle and let's give it a shuffle so we take one little card from each color so we do from the orange first and gosh it looks so bright on camera today my orange right oopsie oopsie giving it just a little okay apparently healthy wants to come through healthy was resisting me and didn't want to go back into the into the pack so we're going to take healthy and let's have a look from the green just making sure i got them the right way up now the single card, and this is going to give us our theme for the next week. Okay, so we had stability, but we're going to take stability because it, it looked like it wanted to come through. So healthy stability, and I'm just going to try and put them behind each other just to make some space so that we don't run out of space on the table. So I think if memory serves me right, we had stability last week, okay? So there, there certainly seems to be, I'm going to call it a theme developing with our themes for the week ahead. But I understand and I appreciate and I actually quite enjoy healthy stability because sometimes we can be so focused on stability. Sometimes we can be so focused on keeping things the way we want or need them to be that we actually miss the point of the experience of the situation, of the circumstance. So healthy stability is, is a reminder to us to not take things to the extreme to not push things too far to not take things too far but it's all about balance doesn't it come back to that it comes back to balance it comes back to just having enough of everything because if we have too much stability it, it puts us beyond the edge and too much stability becomes stagnancy and stagnancy is something we don't want none of us want to experience stagnancy none of us want to have that so healthy stability is exactly what we need and it's exactly the right amount and healthy you know putting things into perspective healthy for you healthy for me may be very different especially when it comes through to stability because what you may consider to be stable what you may consider to be healthy stability might be too much for me or not enough so healthy puts things into perspective and stability is just the right quantity of joy success, abundance, happiness, etc. So I think as a theme for the week ahead, I'm loving that. So next I have is an oracle and this is called, I want to show you the box, I should have brought it closer. This is the Earth Magic Oracle by Stephen Farmer. Beautiful deck. Love, love, love this deck. The, the artwork on the backs, excuse the glare, these are quite glossy, so it's going to have a, a challenge trying to find a spot for it on the table where it's not going to blind us, but uh, hopefully we will do that, find a spot. Just giving it, I did shuffle before I started the recording as always, but I do like to shuffle on camera just to keep things keep things healthily stable <laughs> right let's give it a little shuffle i'm looking for a single card 
from Earth Magic Oracle that's going to contribute to our healthy stability to help us with our theme for the week ahead. Okay, I'm happy with the shuffle. Put the cards back together and cut the deck over there. Right, we have our card. Let's put these out of the way. And let's have a look and see what is our healthy stability message from the Oracle for the week ahead. Meadow and vulnerability. You see now, uh, to me it ties in because what we have here is healthy stability. We don't have too much. We don't have too little. Even though there are patches where maybe we don't have these beautiful wildflowers, but it, it brings everything into balance. But it's also making sure that we understand our vulnerability. We understand the the ecosystem of life, the ecosystem of how things work. And in that ecosystem, we have to understand that in our ecosystem and in our healthy stability, we all have to face our own vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities is not a negative. It's not a, a weak point. It's not a soft spot that people are going to target. It's about recognizing that you're human. It's about recognizing healthy stability. How much of this do we need? How much of that do we need? And together it brings us vulnerable happiness, stability and health. So we can't have an excess of one thing because as soon as we have an excess of one thing, our, our stability is out, our, our levels are out, our everything is out. And vulnerability is allowing areas of lack, allowing areas of no pretty flowers, allowing areas of, of um, emptiness and openness to allow other things to happen because while those areas have no flowers they are rejuvenating themselves they are replenishing soil they are replenishing and allowing these areas to get the focus and all of that brings us our healthy stability so i think that's actually quite a quite an awesome awesome message and to me it ties in beautifully with what we have over there all right next on our agenda uh, next on our list is to do the animal energy for the week ahead. So this week I have gone back to using Colette Baron reeds Spirit Animal Oracle. Um, I just thought let's use it again. I haven't used it for a while. Let's give it a shuffle and uh, see which animal energy wants to come through for the week ahead. Now, when I do animal energies, we're not really talking about animal totems. We're not really working with animal guides, but what we're looking at is animal characteristics, energies that we can adopt, adapt and bring in, utilize into our worlds at the moment. So during the week, because we're looking at a short period of seven days, if you find yourself facing a challenge, if you find yourself struggling through something, if you find yourself struggling to understand something, ask yourself, how would that animal handle the situation? Or what is that animal's characteristics? What are that animal's processes and, and experiences? And you will learn something from the animal kingdom because I do believe that us humans, we need to, we need to get closer to the animal kingdom. We need to get closer to understanding how simple you know, everything is with the animals. I had an experience this week, and I'll, I'll share with you very quickly before we turn the card over. Um, for those of you in South Africa, you will understand um, the animal I'm about to tell you about is the hardy dar. So the hardy dar is, is a bird from the ibis family, I think it is. And um, we, we, we do find them terribly annoying here in South Africa because they, they make a lot of noise. And I mean a lot of noise, and it's not a pleasant sound. But I was... Um, I was hanging up my washing. I was being domesticated, hanging up my washing. And I looked at the roof of the property or the roof of my home. And I saw there was a whole lot of these hardy dars sitting sort of on, on the top of the roof. And I noticed the one was pruning the other. The other one, the one was sort of, you know, going through the feathers and doing a clean up and a tidy up. And the one who was being cleaned was sort of oblivious. You know, they didn't pay any attention. They just stood there, you know, doing whatever it is that that hardy dars do while he was being cleaned and pruned by another bird. He never acknowledged the other bird. He never said, you know, um, it never showed appreciation. He just sort of stood there and allowed the other bird to do what he wanted to do. And when the one bird stopped, he then immediately reciprocated and started doing to the other one. And I, I sort of watched this and I thought to myself, isn't it amazing how the animal kingdom have no judgment? 
they have no expectation they have no kind of like well what are you doing to me why are you doing that what are you implying are you implying that i'm dirty are you implying that i can't take care of myself there was none of that ego okay and i was actually quite blown away because at that point the one bird decided okay i don't want to be here anymore i want to fly off and did and the other one was not bothered was not affected was not insulted and i thought you know what we can learn so much from the irritating hardy dogs <laughs> anyway side story long story i apologize let's get into your animal energy for the week what can we learn what can we use and what does this animal have to share with us this week buffalo i love buffalo so buffalo is card number 10 at the top and buffalo is reminding you that the abundant universe will provide for you always and you can see by the size of the buffalo you can see by the power of the buffalo you can see by you know the uh, i'm going to say the enormity of its head but reminding you that the abundant universe will provide for you the universe will always provide for you there is absolutely no doubt about it the challenge that we have is our belief and our trust in the situation as human beings we have judgment hence my hardy da story expectation judgment criticism etc of people situations and circumstances we have seemed to have lost the ability to take things at face value so buffalo spirit being large being big being powerful being strong being very i'm gonna say set in their ways and they do everything with their head it's head first with everything okay they carry so much power in their neck and their shoulders they carry so much authority in their neck and their shoulders and let me tell you if you're going to get knocked by a buffalo you're going to feel it there is no doubt about it and they don't think oh maybe it's too much maybe it's too hard maybe you know they have this this healthy understanding of how much is enough and actually they just go full out they just full force full out all the time with no judgment with no expectation and always when they've decided they're head strong when they've decided on what they want nothing nobody gets in their way and stops them and friends i think this is what we need for this week make a decision as to what you want make a decision considering our healthy stabilities considering our vulnerabilities make a decision as to what you want what's important for you and go for it okay don't let anything anyone get in the way slow you down or stop you from achieving that which you need to achieve want to achieve for the week ahead it's important that you be headstrong that you be i'm even going to throw a little bit of stubbornness into the equation here not stubbornness around the choice and the decision but the stubbornness in uh, in not stopping until you achieve gain and uh, and get to that which you need and that which you want so the meadow with the vulnerability is saying to you that yes when you're focusing on one thing you may be leaving other aspects of yourself vulnerable but it's okay there is enough to go around the universe is taking care of you the abundant universe will provide for you that doesn't mean that you can sit back and wait and do nothing and expect things to happen just because let me tell you friends that unfortunately doesn't work the universe does not just give you because you said can i have all right you have to do the work if the buffalo wants to achieve an outcome the buffalo has to charge the buffalo has to attack the buffalo has to do the movement do the action and this is spirit reminding us healthy stability is a constant working towards goals okay and if you are doing that it'll bring you the stability that you're looking for it'll bring you the success that you're looking for the achievements that you're looking for but while you're working on something there will be some vulnerabilities and it's okay it's okay to be vulnerable friends it's okay so i'm loving where this is going okay next we have our crystal energy for the week ahead so here are my crystal cards let's give them a shuffle and oopsie, I am shuffling so badly today. Let's give them a little shuffle. And we're looking for a single card, a single crystal energy that we can also incorporate, use and lean on for the week ahead. Message from the crystal as well for the week ahead, bringing us our healthy stability, bringing us a way to process and to deal with our vulnerabilities and also to give to help us to be headstrong in accomplishing and achieving whatever we need. So that card decided it was the one it wants that wants to be chosen. 
So let's have a look. What crystal energy are we working with for the week ahead? We've got garnet. I love garnet. Beautiful deep red color. So garnets have long been thought to assist with healing wounds. This is due to their dark red color. They promote courage, joy, and creativity, and they instill a sense of emotional balance. Garnets are a stone that attract abundance and connect us and help connect us to our spirit. They work with the element of earth and fire. It is all about our root chakra, and root chakra is very, very buffalo, let me tell you. The affirmation, I am able to heal and connect to my spirit. So I'm going to leave garnet over there. I think that's beautiful. So garnet really is like a, a deep, deep, deep red. You can see the, the, the color here. You can see an example of the crystal over there. Um, it really is a beautiful, deep stone. Beautiful. And garnet, you know, it, it's fiery and it's passionate and it's enthusiastic and it deals with our core human needs. And again, buffalo energy. Buffalo spirit, core human needs, core needs, abundant universe will provide. And again, we talk about abundance there as well. But we're also talking about vulnerability because it talks about healing wounds. Now, when we talk about wounds here, it could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be mental, it could be spiritual, whatever it is that's going on in your life. And understand that healthy stability means having, recognizing and acknowledging the wounds that you have and allowing them to heal in the right amount of time. Healthy means we can't speed it up, we can't slow it down. We need to just allow things to happen in the time that they are going to take to happen. And Buffalo Spirit again, being headstrong being determined, knowing what you're working towards, knowing what's important and significant in your life, and not stopping until you've got and achieved that. Awesome. So the next thing that we are going to do is our elemental readings. So today I am working with this tarot deck. It is the Journey Tarot, a deck for personal growth. Um, beautiful, beautiful deck. I love the artwork on this particular deck. It's quite an inexpensive deck. So for those of you who are looking, actually let's do it that way. For those of you who are looking for a deck to add to your collection, um, a deck that you want to work with that's fairly modern, fairly inclusive, fairly simple and totally wonderful, <laughs> I highly recommend this particular one. So um, for the elemental readings, just while I'm shuffling the cards, for the elemental readings, we focus, well, I do four um, separate readings, four specific readings that cover the 12 signs of the zodiac. So we look at the elements of fire, earth, air, and water, and every single one of our zodiac signs falls into or has an element association with it. So by doing the um, reading based on the elements, because we're only looking at a very short period of time of seven days, to do a individual reading for each sign of the zodiac for seven days, it's almost like a little bit mooch. It's almost like it's a little bit uh, overkill, okay? Because it is only a seven-day period. So that's why I categorize them into the elements. So we look at the elements of fire, which are the zodiac signs of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. We then look at the earth signs, which are Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Then we do air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And finally, we do the water signs, which are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So each one of you will get a personal reading, um, you know, specific to your element for the week ahead. And generally what I'm looking at here is the, the energies that are around you for the week ahead, the energies that you're going to be working through, the things that you need to deal with for the week ahead. So we're going to get started now with the fire signs. Fire signs being Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. Let's have a look and see what is the energy for you for the week ahead. We're looking at the week of the 29th, I think I'm getting it right, the 29th of May through to the 4th of June. Energy for fire signs, Aries, Leo and Sag. Okay, let's Cut the deck there. Card number one for our elemental reading. We have got the beautiful two of cups. And card two, I'm just going to do two cards this week. We have got the king of pentacles. All right. So when I look at this really pretty two of cups, I love the colors. The, 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 the color palette is gorgeous in this deck. So immediately I'm noticing this kind of a ribbon 
sort of twisting motion happening in the background. Um, and we've got these two identical cups with opposite symbols on them, but they really are exactly the same. They're opposite, but they're the same. Um, and when I look at this kind of helix twist scenario happening in the background, it the two of cups is about a partnership, about a union, about a connection. So it is going to be a week of union, a week of connection. So if you are a single, this could indicate a connection with a relationship, with a new energy in your life. But if you're in a relationship, this could be a partnership between you and somebody else, a connection between you and somebody else, work-related, family-related, social-related, um, etc. Okay, so the Two of Cups is about recognizing that you don't have to be so strong and independent. The Two of Cups is saying that you don't have to handle everything on your own. It's okay to lean on somebody else. It's okay to, to allow somebody else to assist you or to share the burden, share the load, share the experience with somebody else. And the second card that we have connected to that for our fire signs is our King of Pentacles. And there he's lying in his beautiful lush leaf chair <laughs> and he is holding on to something that is important and significant to him but he is so laid back he is so chilled he is so comfy he wants and needs for nothing okay he's very aware of what he has he's very aware of the abundance that's available to him but he's comfortable with it he's not arrogant with it he's not sort of you know full of himself with it he's just very comfortable with what it is that he has created for himself and what it is that he has for himself so he knows exactly what his worth is but he's not arrogant and you know over the top with it so to me when i look at these two cards for fire signs for the week ahead aries leo and sag recognize who and what you are what you've achieved what it is that you have but still don't feel like you you don't need help from somebody else or that you don't need to share a journey a burden and experience with somebody else even though you have a lot even though you have accomplished a lot a shared experience is always so much better than trying to do everything on your own. All right, fire signs, I hope you have an awesome week ahead. Um, we don't have too much glare over there, so it should be fine. Right, we're moving into earth signs next. So earth signs, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. Let's have a look and see what is the energy of the week ahead for you. The week ahead for all earth signs taurus virgo and capricorn okay, i'm happy with the shuffle let's cut the deck there card number one that we have for earth signs we have got the two of swords second card that we have is the ten of cups beautiful beautiful cards so the two of swords immediately i'm noticing the hands in front i'm also noticing the swords that all seem to be doing a bit of a cross so the hands are crossed over the swords are crossed over and we also have this kind of infinity crossover symbol in the background two of swords is the card that says to you that we're not always completely honest with ourselves around the truth okay it is the card of not seeing not knowing not believing or not facing something that is right in front of you it's the card of saying i can't see therefore i don't know so it's a little bit like ostrich mentality okay and we need to be careful of that this week earth signs because we want to make sure that we are being completely open i'm going to bring in healthy stability for you here because maybe we have focused so much on stability that we now have stagnancy and we we've got ourselves crossed off we've got ourselves closed off to opportunities to situations and circumstances instead of being open to whatever's going on now the interesting one here that we have connected to it is the ten of cups and ten of cups is about the perfect home the happy home the the you know the idyllic lifestyle that we have within our home space within our emotional space so we want this we need this we deserve this we have this but we're not seeing it because we're a little bit closed off we're a little bit too fixed on things being a certain way things being a certain um a certain style that we're not actually seeing that which we have as far as our home goes so it's about taking the blindfolds off it's about recognizing 
truthfully, honestly, what is right in front of you, seeing it for what it is, acknowledging it for what it is, so that it can help you have the balance. Because immediately I'm noticing we've got this, this water, water here, we've got sky over there, and we've got mirror image. Okay, so as above, so below. What we see here is what we have here. So it, that brings about healthy stability. But if you're closed off to truth, if you're closed off to acknowledging what it is, who it is, how it is that you have in your life, you're not going to get the balance that you're looking for. So earth signs for the week ahead, have the conversations, even if they're difficult. Okay, express yourself, be open, be vulnerable. Let's not forget be vulnerable. Let's remove our blindfolds so that we can work towards getting the happy home life that we want, that we need, and that we deserve. All right, Earth Signs, lots of love and blessings for you for the week ahead. And we're moving into our Air Signs. So Air Signs, let's have a look. Week ahead for all Air Signs. We're looking at Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. We're looking at air signs for the week ahead. The week of the 29th of May to the 4th of June, 2022. Air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Okay, shuffled. Cutting the deck over there. Card number one for air signs, we have got the card of temperance, which is healthy stability. By the way, we will get there. <laughs> and we also have the Tower card. Gosh, so air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, this is Spirit saying to you, it's going to be a tough week, okay? It really is going to be a tough week. You more than anybody need the healthy stability. You more than anybody need the garnet stone of healing, of abundance, of courage, of joy and creativity. So when I look at the first card, the Temperance card, we, we see the lady standing here. She's got one foot on the ground and she's got one foot in the water. You can see her pants are starting to soak up the water. She's got her foot standing in soil, okay? So she's really connected to earth and she's really connected to the water as well. And as she stands there, she has this kind of aura that's happening around her. There's another version of herself that she is exchanging energy with. But basically what's happening is this energy is, is almost doing a, a complete circle around her through her but this is impossible if she's not connected to both earth and emotion to physical and emotion okay so temperance card 14 is the card of balance it is the card of understanding that we mustn't only focus on one part of ourselves one area of ourselves one aspect of ourselves that actually we need to encompass everything we need to find balance in all things that we are and all things that we do i like to say with the temperance card that it, it reminds us that if you are a full-time employee if you work full-time you've got this job that takes eight hours of your day plus travel time to and from work whatever it may be it takes up a huge chunk of our time of our energy of our thoughts of our emotions of everything and then on the other hand we've got our family who we see for a few hours a day but when we are home with our family we're so focused on cooking cleaning washing da 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 da, da sorting the kids out getting them fed getting the bath doing homework getting them to bed on time that we don't have time for ourselves because all our energy is going here we don't have energy for this so temperance is always saying take the opposite aspects of your life take the two the two parts of your day which are not really interconnected you know work family very very separate there, there's a gap in the middle and this is spirit saying you need to find balance between the opposites so it could be finances emotions it could be work it could be relationships the you know look at the opposites in your life and this is saying to you you need to find the balance because he signs spirit is saying that you're breaking a little bit Spirit is saying that you are vulnerable, that you are falling apart, that you are cracking at the seams, okay? We've got the Tower card. Look, even where she's sitting, it's about to, you know, it's splitting open, it's splitting apart, and, and she's probably going to fall through the, 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 the gap. So what we've got happening here, you know, and, and again, Air Signs, it's, it's a week, it's, it's seven days. Over the next seven days, you seriously need to focus on having healthy stability in all areas of life, not just in the one, because it's taking a toll on you. You, you are being pulled apart in so many directions that you don't even know which way is up anymore. OK, and for the week ahead, it is so important that you focus on bringing, finding, establishing, holding on to balance so that you don't fall apart. 
okay so that you don't we want to prevent this we want to prevent this so acknowledge your vulnerabilities but make sure that you have healthy stability in all that you do do not do anything in excess or in deficit we want healthy stability sending you lots of love air signs lots of love gemini libra and aquarius for the week ahead we now do our water signs. So water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Let's have a look at the energy for you for the week ahead. We're looking at the energy for you for the week of the 29th of May to the 4th of June 2022 for all water signs, Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces. Okay. Cards are shuffled, cutting the deck over there. And let's say card number one, we have the nine of swords. And card number two is the moon card. Beautiful. All right, I'm getting the, the whole deck out of the way because we are done with it. So water signs, what we've got here with the nine of swords. Now, the card may look fairly uninteresting and fairly uninspiring, but we need to notice the colors. The colors are quite dark and somber. We also then have this row of, and I'll show you because they really are beautiful, this row of intricate, detailed, beautiful swords that have the sharpest tips the sharpest points and they even have this tiny drop of blood that's coming through okay but can you see just how absolutely sharp their tips are even though they're so gorgeous you know the focus goes here oh and they're so pretty but they can they have the potential to calm to cause trouble the nine of swords is the card that we generally in the tarot community refer to as the nightmare card it talks about you know, having to deal with your deepest insecurities, your deepest fears, the things that go bump in the night, if I can put it that way. The Nine of Swords is the card that says to you that um, during the day you're putting on a brave face and you're pretending that everything is great. You're pretending that you're happy. But at nighttime, when nobody's around, when darkness, when darkness calls, when darkness comes, that's when you are releasing your vulnerabilities your vulnerabilities you're releasing your blood you are releasing your fears your stresses and your anxieties you may be suffering from depression you may be feeling incredibly anxious and you're you're pretending during the day that everything is great and then like i said at night when you're in bed when nobody else is around that's when you're allowing your anxieties your stresses to come out now bringing it into healthy stability because that is not healthy keeping a brave face in the daytime a smile on your face pretending that everything is great and then you know falling apart at night is not the way that you should be living your life that is not healthy stability the second card that we have and i mean it it suddenly it, it has a lighter look to it it has a lighter feel to it we have this beautiful big eye we have this open circle and we have like i don't know if it's ribbons or flow of energy or what it is that's happening in the front here but the card is really a beautiful positive card this huge big golden eye effect that we have at the top is telling you that you need to take a good hard look at yourself we need to look through the tunnel we need to make sure that we are not having tunnel vision but that we are seeing everything that is there the moon is the card of um of recognizing your intuition it's recognizing the cycles in life that's why we have this huge big circle and recognizing that you know what some some days are just okay and some days are really really not okay um it's the cycles and the biorhythms of life and you know when you recognize that i'm just going through a, a bad patch a bad spill it almost makes it okay and easier for you to just go with the flow instead of resisting fighting pretending and having unhealthy stability in your life the moon card is also the card that says understand that you are on a journey that you are on a you know you're going through a process and there's no shortcuts there's no quick exits there's no way of avoiding you have to go through and deal with what you have to go through and deal with but the moon card is also the card that says to you you have to face your fears you have to face the things that scare you the most so water signs cancer Scorpio, Pisces, you are going to have to deal with some challenges this week. You are going to deal with some difficulties this week. Easy for you to overcome, simple for you to overcome, but overcome you must. And the only way that you're going to do that is through healthy stabilities. So interesting week for you. I, I look forward to seeing how that plays out for you. Do comment and let me know when you recognize this and how you overcome it. I'd love to hear from you below.
All right. We have done our elemental reading. We are now going to go into everybody's favorite for the week. <laughs> and that is our Q&A with Spirit. So here I have the cues. Here I have my questions cards. So let's give them a shuffle. And as I shuffle these cards, we're asking Spirit to help us by picking a question that uh, is relevant and appropriate, something that we all need to be pondering and thinking through life at the moment. What is a question that Spirit feel is significant for every single one of us right now? Something that uh, has maybe been lurking in the back of our minds without us really even being consciously aware of it. And something that Spirit feel would be a good lesson, a good learning and a good experience for all of us to have right here and right now. Okay, so I have shuffled. Cutting the deck there and taking the card off the top. Put the questions away. Gosh, if I can pick it up. Let's have a look. What is our question of the week? We're looking at shadow work and we're looking at what is this underlying fear. So what is interesting, and I think he can fit in that space over there. Um, swap them around. Sorry, just I didn't like that. That, that looks more nice, neater and tidier. So we're asking our shadow. So shadow is a part of ourselves that is not obvious, that's not crystal clear. Shadow is a part of ourselves that we choose to ignore, that we choose to avoid. When I now consider the elemental readings that we've just done for every sign of the zodiac, we have a week of dealing with shadow. Each one of us has got something coming through. We have to acknowledge our vulnerabilities. We have to be a little bit headstrong as we identify this underlying fear. We've got the garnet stone or garnet crystal that's come through as well, which says to you, garnets have long been thought to assist with healing wounds. This is due to their dark red color. They promote courage, joy, creativity, and they instill a sense of emotional balance, healthy stability, abundance, vulnerability. And all of this is going to help us to identify what is our underlying fear that we are all dealing with. And to answer this this week, I am going to use the Little Buddha Tarot. Little Buddha Tarot, let's get some wisdom from Little Buddha Energy. Let's ask our Little Buddha, what is this underlying fear that we are all feeling at the moment, that we are all experiencing at the moment, that we're all struggling with at the moment. Because let's be honest, you know, we all feel uneasy. I, I've noticed it in all my consults. I've noticed it in all the readings that I've done with clients over the last couple of weeks, that there is this kind of, this, this kind of subtle, unknown fear that we all have. We're all worried about what next. You know, what next? What else is going to happen? What else is going to go wrong? What else am I going to struggle with? What else am I going to battle with? What else is going to negatively affect me? We do not have healthy stability in our lives at the moment because of the underlying fear that we're all dealing with and that we're all processing and that we're all navigating. So let's see if we can identify the fear because if you can identify the fear, suddenly it goes away. Suddenly it's not so big and scary anymore. You know, if you're lying in your bed and you hear a noise, your imagination, your insecurities and your doubts and fears make that noise the biggest, scariest thing ever. But when you get up and actually find the courage and the confidence to actually go and explore and to look at it and you, you see, oh, but hold a second, it was just a... A moth flying against the window trying to get out, suddenly it's not so big and scary anymore. So if we can identify the fear that we're all carrying, that we're all holding, that we're all working through at the moment, if we can identify it, it'll make it a lot easier for us. So let's see. Little Buddha Tarot, what is our underlying fear that we are all going through at the moment? I am happy with the shuffle. Cutting the deck there. So we have got the Seven of Cups. We have got the Four of Swords. And we have got the Six of Swords. Okay, just putting the deck aside. Let's have a look. First of all, how cute and gorgeous and amazing are these cards? I just love my little Buddha tarot. So the Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is the card of choices and options. An underlying fear is that what if we make the wrong choice? What if we do the wrong thing? What if we don't like 
the options that are presented to us. When we talk about healthy stability, I've mentioned it quite a few times in this reading that, you know, healthy stability is one thing, but too much stability immediately puts us into an energy of stagnancy, puts us into an energy of stuckness. And this is exactly what we have here with the Seven of Cups, because we have got seven choices, seven options. He's been told, pick one. OK, he's looking at all seven and every single one of them offer him something. Every single one of them has a positive and a negative, a pro and a con. So our little Buddha is looking at going, now I'm nervous, I'm afraid. What happens if I choose the wrong one? What happens if I choose one that actually isn't so great? What happens if I choose one that doesn't fit me or doesn't taste nice or doesn't do what I need it to do? What happens if I choose one, but actually one of the others would be a better fit for me? So we create a situation of analysis paralysis and that's exactly what's happening so what is the underlying fear that we're all happening that we're all going through right now is the fear of wrong choices and wrong decisions i'm also needing to add here i'm hearing in my head that sometimes it's not our choices and decisions but it's the choices and decisions that other people make that in, impact us that affect us okay so the underlying fear it could be a governmental thing it could be a work thing it could be a relationship thing but we worry that somebody else is going to make a decision that's going to impact us negatively and we didn't have a say that we didn't have a choice that we didn't have opportunity to bring healthy stability into our lives. So immediately, what is the underlying fear? The choices that are or are not available to us. The next card we have is the Four of Swords. And I mean, here we can see little Buddha is actually just taking a nap, climbed on his little purple bed, put his head on his pillow, and he's taking a nap. He's ready to get up and go at a moment's notice if he needs to, should he need to. But he's sort of saying, you know what, I'm, I'm going to sleep on it. I'm not going to rush. I'm not going to put pressure on myself. I'm not going to buffalo straight into the situation, okay? Because when I do that, I actually make it worse. What I need to do is healthy stability, the right amount of movement, the right, around, right amount of energy, the right amount of progress. And actually, I'm not going to rush the choice and the decision. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to sleep on it, but I'm not going to sleep on it forever, okay? I'm not going to sleep on it for a week, for a month, for a year. I'm going to take one sleep one rest, one moment to think, to, to actually just allow the choices to settle. If you take a glass of, of water with a bit of glitter in and you shake it up, it, it, it's chaos. The glitter is all over the place. But if you put it down and you wait for the glitter to settle, then it's easier to do it, whatever you need to do with it. And that's exactly what's happening here. He's waiting for the situation to settle. And that's the healthy stability. He's not waiting forever. He's not waiting for a long time. He's sort of saying, okay, I've looked at my choices. I've looked at my options. I know the, the pros and the cons, the good and bad of each one. I'm now going to sleep on it and see which one feels right to me in the morning. Okay. Our third card that we've drawn to answer the question from our shadow, what is our underlying fear? We have the Six of Swords. And the Six of Swords, there we have little Buddha who has now climbed into this little boat. He's got somebody who's rowing the boat for him. And you can see that he's got a little bit of panic. You can see that he's got a little bit of fear. You can see that he's nervous. Even his little body language is, is showing that he's nervous. So basically, he's made a decision. He's gotten, so he's made a choice, all right? He slept on it. He's made his choice. He's gotten into the boat. Now the boat is moving. It's taking him to some other place. And he's suddenly having those doubts, those insecurities of, what have I done? Did I, do, did I make the right decision? Am I going in the right direction? Am I going to be happy? Is it going to work okay? Is it going to be all right? And, and he's, he's, he's hyperventilating and he's panicking around that whole situation. And friends, this is, this is our shadow. This is the underlying fear that we're all experiencing is the insecurity or the, the insecurity of not knowing that everything's going to be okay. We are so set on production. We are so set on outcomes. We are so set on knowing what we're working towards that we find it difficult to trust. We find it difficult to believe. We find it difficult to accept 
that what will be will be. And this is the underlying fear that we are all dealing with, processing and going through at the moment. And this is the underlying fear that may be causing us some trouble. And this is the underlying fear that is causing us to not have healthy stability in our life because we either do one thing too much or we don't do it at all. There's this one or the other. There's no middle ground. And little Buddha is saying to us, we need middle ground. Each and every single one of us, we need that middle ground in our lives right now. So friends, I hope that that sort of gives you a little bit of food for thought. I hope that sort of helps you navigate the week ahead, navigate the life that is before you. Don't be afraid. Don't hold back. Go for it. Live the life that you were meant to live with happiness, with joy, and with success. Friends, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for allowing me to hold your hand as we walk this journey of life. With love and blessings, from my heart to yours. And until we connect again, take care.